Hey everybody, my name's Ryan, and here at eTrailer, we install, test fit, and review a lot of different parts. That way we could try to answer any questions those of you might have. And that's exactly what we're doing here today on our 2021 Ram 2500. We're gonna be taking a look at, showing you how, how to install the B&W Underbed Gooseneck Trailer Hitch. So nowadays, these type of hitches are becoming more and more popular. These trucks are really capable, and so a lot of people feel a lot more comfortable uh, pulling large trailers around, whether it be a camper, work trailer, whatever the case may be, you're definitely gonna want a hitch that is gonna be able to handle just about anything you wanna throw at it. And that's exactly what this B&W is gonna be able to do. Now, to be honest with you, I've installed quite a few gooseneck trailer hitches, and the one thing that really separates a B&W from many of the others is the overall craftsmanship. These things are really nice. They're put together very well. And even down to the little things, just the hardware that comes with it and the ease of use, everything works like it should and how you would expect it to. And to me, that's something that is extremely important. Whenever you're pulling around a big heavy trailer, you're not gonna want any weak links. And considering, since this is your main attachment point, you want it to be very reliable, and this is gonna be just that. It's gonna have some good weight capacities. The gross towing weight is going to be 30,000 pounds. That's gonna be the amount of weight that's pulling on the ball. And the vertical load limit is going to be 7,500 pounds. That's gonna be the amount of weight pushing down on the ball. And in case you're wondering, the ball is going to be two and five sixteenths in diameter. And something that's pretty cool about this too is the fact that it is a turnover ball. So what that means is whenever you're not using this, you can actually pull it out, flip it around, and store it right inside of your hitch. That way you're not going to have to worry about, you know, leaving this behind somewhere on accident, or, you know, you've got it rolling around in the back seat of your truck. Uh, it's just really convenient. You can store it here and not have to think about it too much. And not to mention, because of that, uh, we're pretty much gonna have full bed access. We're not gonna have really anything uh, obstructing the middle of our truck. Granted, we will have our safety uh, chains here, but in all honesty, these only come up a little bit and they're about even with the channels here on our bed. So really not taking up a ton of space. That way, if maybe you wanna throw in, you know, some lumber back here, or if you're doing a project at the house and you put some uh, other material, four wheelers, motorcycles, whatever the case may be, you're not gonna have a big hitch taking up a ton of space. So the U-bolts here where you put your safety chains are pretty cool. They're actually spring loaded. So when you're not using them, they sit nice and flush. And when you are ready to use them, you can pull up and you got quite a bit of space actually. So shouldn't really have any issues getting pretty much any size hook that you might have on there. So whenever the ball is locked in, it's going to be very solid. There's hardly any movement at all. And that's really because it has a square design. And so you're not gonna have to worry about that ball kind of spinning or rotating on you. One thing I do like about the B&W is the handle. It's super easy to operate and that's really not the case with all goosenecks. This one, whenever you're ready to unlatch, you just pull it out, kind of move it to the left a little bit, and it'll stay open for you. That way you can get your ball in there, do whatever you need to do. Whenever you're ready to hook up, you just kind of pull it to the right a little bit, and more or less let it go back in on its own. You might have to kind of help it a little bit, and you're locked in, so super user friendly, and you don't really need to think about it or fight with it a whole lot. Now, something I do just want to point out, uh, from time to time, once you first install the hitch, sometimes the powder coating on there can kind of hang your handle up a little bit. And usually you can solve that very quickly by just lubricating it a little bit, work it in and out a couple times, and then it'll be as smooth as butter. So at the end of the day, a hitch you really can't go wrong with. To be honest with you, these B&Ws are my favorite, and that's really just because the overall reliability, the ease of use, and the quality of construction. And because of those things, getting them installed is a little bit easier too compared to some of the others. Everything fits well and don't really fight you a whole lot. 
Uh, matter of fact, I'll say probably the most difficult part about this one is actually tightening all the hardware. It just takes a little bit of time. But if you follow along with me, I'll show you some of the tools that I used and some tricks to make it a little bit easier. Speaking of which, let's go ahead and put it on together now. So to begin our installation, we're gonna be underneath the back of our truck. And I went ahead and just temporarily removed our spare tire. That way it gives us a lot more room to work and see what we're doing. With that being said, we're gonna to need to remove this heat shield here, which will also allow us to get to where we need to go. So to get this shield off, we're gonna have uh, four fasteners right here. And then we're gonna have a couple of them on this back edge. They're really hard to see, but actually relatively easy to feel. So we're gonna take a 10 millimeter socket and get all of those removed. So with all the bolts removed, we can lower this down and set it off to the side for now. Now we need to do is lower our exhaust down a little bit to give us a little bit of extra space. Uh, we're gonna have one rubber hanger right here that we need to remove. So you wanna spray it down with some soapy water. That'll help lubricate it. I'm just gonna take a pry bar and pry one end of our isolator hanger off. Now what we can do is grab our template and how this is gonna work is this hole right here, we're going to line that up with this hole right here in our cross member. This is the hole on the passenger side front. So we're gonna line this up. When we're lining that up, we're gonna push this up flat against the bottom of our bed. And this small hole here, is going to uh, be an indicator for us. We're gonna mark it and that's gonna let us uh, know where we need to drill. So when you do this, it has to go on top of the cross member. So you wanna kinda of sneak it in like this. Line that up. Line the two holes up. Wanna get it as best as you can. And when you line them up, you also wanna make sure you push this flat against the bed of the truck. So I got it where I need it to be. I'm gonna take a marker and put a dot there. So we'll come back with our drill bit and create a pilot hole in the bottom of our truck bed. Now we can hop up in the bed of our truck and take a hole saw and create our opening for our gooseneck to come through. So here's my pilot hole that we drilled from the bottom. My hole saw that I'm using is three and a half inches. So I'll go ahead and get that cut out. And while I'm in the bed, I'm just gonna grab my vacuum cleaner and pick up our mess here. And then what I'm gonna do is take a paint stick and where we have bare metal from creating the hole, I'm gonna put a layer of this paint on there. That's just gonna help keep it protected from any rust and corrosion. If you don't have one of these paint sticks, you can always just use some spray paint. That'll get the job done as well. So now back underneath our truck, we wanna take a close look at our center section here. And what we're looking for is any extra lines, wiring, plastic clips, anything like that, that will be attached to it. Uh, because this is where our hitch is actually gonna set. So if you have stuff in the way here, you're gonna need to grab a flat blade screwdriver and just pop those out and get them removed. With that being said, we can now focus on getting our nut plates installed. So. If you look here, we have kind of a handle and two nuts that are attached to the plate. And these two nuts are actually gonna line up 
with these two holes on our uh, center section here. And they're gonna line up on each side. So everything's gonna be the same on each side here. Now the way to get these in, what you're gonna to wanna to do is make sure that this portion of the nut is gonna be facing down. And the way to get these in there, it's kinda of tricky, they're a little bit tight. You're gonna to wanna to set these up on top center section so you're going to kind of have to weasel it in there and kind of find that sweet spot get a little creative here and try to kind of rotate it in there and I feel like I feel like once this pops in It'll probably be a lot easier to work with. I think the most challenging part is just trying to physically get it in there. So once you work that nut plate into position, this is what it should look like. As you can see, the threaded portions of it line up with our two uh, outermost holes there. So you want to get that into position. And I went ahead and did the same thing over on this side as well. So now what I'd like to do is just kind of go over our attachment points on our hitch itself and how we're going to position it underneath the truck. So if we look on one side of it, we're going to have this uh, little lever here. You want this to be on the driver's side of your truck. And you notice the hole here is actually offset. You want the offset portion, this side, to face towards the front. Now, with that being said, we're going to have a total of eight bolts that's going to hold this into position. This is what they're going to look like. Four of them will run up through the hitch on the sides here into those nut plates that we put in. And four more are going to come in through our center uh, section into the hitch, into these threaded portions. So, really straightforward. But I just wanted to kind of show you how we're going to do this before we uh, put it under our truck. And just to kind of put two and two together, I figured I'd show you, we could take a quick look at the center section here. So as I mentioned before, the two bolts are going to come up through the hitch into the nut plates that we put in. And the four bolts on the side are going to line up with these larger holes here in our factory center section. So two on each side. With that being said, let's grab our hitch and get it into place. So grab our center section, get it up. You may have to finesse it in. And now we're holding it up there. We'll grab our bolts and get a few of them started hand tight. That way it'll support itself. Now that we have all of our hardware in place and hand tight, I suggest hopping up in the bed of the truck and just making sure that everything lines up here. Um, if it's off just a hair, it's not dead center, that's okay. A lot of times what can happen is once you kind of uh, tighten up all your bolts, it'll draw everything up exactly where it needs to be. So now that we know, to know it is lined up, let's go ahead, get underneath and tighten everything down. Now back underneath the truck, we can grab our socket and get everything tightened down. I'm gonna tighten down these bolts first here on the bottom. And once those are tightened, we can come back and get the ones on the side. For this bolt back here, it is relatively close to our handle mechanism, so you may need to use a thin walled socket like this one here, or even a box wrench to get in there and actually get this tightened out. So now just kind of a quick tech tip to make it a lot easier to get to the bolts on this side. Um, I actually used a strap, a ratcheting strap, 
went around my exhaust and cranked it down and that pulled my exhaust a few inches kind of down and towards the center of our truck which makes it a lot easier to get to these bolts and without doing this these are nearly impossible to get to so this only took an extra minute and makes life a lot easier so with the exhaust being held like that i'm easily able to get to my bolts and run them down and for the bolts here on the side um when they're this far out it's really difficult to get a socket in there we just don't have a ton of space in between the head of the bolt and the hat channel here on our bed so what I suggest doing is just using a ratcheting wrench like this one to tighten them down. If you don't have a ratcheting wrench, a standard one will work just fine. It'll just take you a little bit longer. You have to be a little more patient. But I just figured this is something that was definitely worth mentioning. So now that all of our hardware is tightened down, we want to be sure to come back with a torque wrench and torque it all to the amount specified in our instructions. Now, when you do this, you wanna make sure to torque down the four bolts on the bottom first, and then we can come back and get the bolts there on the side. Now, just kind of a quick tuck tip for the bolt that's all the way back here. It's a little tricky to get to. What I found is to use a combination of different tools here. So I have my socket, a swivel, an extension, and then I actually have an extension that uh, the end of it allows you to rotate a little bit more as well. And I used all three eight sizes. It's a little bit thinner. And then I just use an adapter that goes from three eighths to half inch. That way I could get my torque wrench on it. And with everything in there like this, you're able to get on that bolt and actually get it tightened down properly. Now what we can do is move to our driver side rear wheel well and what we need to do is loosen up some wiring that's on top of the frame rail. That way it'll be out of the way and we're able to get started on our handle that goes in here. So it's a little tricky to see but there's going to be some plastic fasteners starting here and a couple more that run down towards the back of the truck and we need to pop those free. I'm just going to use a trim tool. You can use a screwdriver as well, though. So I'm just kind of pry up. Get those fasteners removed. And then you can kind of just push that wiring back in there. Now we can grab our handle and slide it in through this opening. Make sure you clear uh, anything that's in the way. And when you do this, you want to make sure that this angle here, this lip is facing up. You don't want to have it facing down towards the ground. So we'll just kind of set it in there, let it rest. We can go underneath the truck and get everything connected. Now underneath the truck, we're going to take this bracket here and attach it to our handle, which is coming out right here. Now we don't have a ton of space and room to work here. So it is a little tight, just kind of a forewarning. But the way this is going to work on our truck, we're going to have two square holes at the very end of our handle. Those are going to line up with these two holes here on this bracket. And the bracket's going to get attached to that handle. You're going to do that by taking carriage bolts and dropping them through our handle. When you're doing this too, you want to make sure that all your lines are clear and everything else. So I'll do that for both of those square openings. Take our bracket, push it through there. And what we're going to do where those carriage bolts drop down, we're just going to take flange nuts and secure them. Again, this is really tight, so take your time with it. 
you'll find that spot where you kind of get an opening and you can get in there and get everything started. Once we have them started though, uh, we're just gonna leave them hand tight for the time being. So now that that one end of the bracket is loosely attached to the handle, this end is gonna get to attach to the mechanism here that actually uh, releases the pen inside of the hitch. Again, we're gonna use the same hardware, just a carriage bolt, drop down through. Now we're gonna take our flange nuts, get these started. And now that it's in place, you can go ahead, grab some sockets and get everything tightened down. I'm gonna use a 916 socket. And just kind of a tech tip, with the bolts uh, being really hard to get to back here, since our gas tank and everything's in the way, what I found that makes it easiest is to use a quarter inch drive and a 916 socket on the end of it that allows you to swivel. And that gives you enough room to get up in there and tighten those nuts down. So now we can get ready to install our safety chain hook. So in the bed of the truck here, if we look at our gooseneck, you wanna make sure that pin is running through there. So you want your handle to be pushed all the way in. What you're gonna do is take your ball, set it in there, and then they actually give us a nice little template here. So it should make things pretty easy. We're gonna slide this over our ball and you want these portions here to face towards the back of the truck. And there's some little openings there. And what I'm gonna do is just hold this template secure and use a small drill bit just to kind of make some marks in the bed of our truck. I'm not gonna drill all the way through just yet. I'm gonna do that, that'll let us know where I need to completely drill. I'm gonna do the same thing over here. Should be able to lift this off. You can see we have our marks made. And so I'll go ahead and use my pilot bit to continue to drill all the way through. These ones should just go right through the bed. However, the ones closest to the rear, you should feel it punch through the bed, and then you'll have to drill through that cross member underneath as well. So there it went through the bed, and then I can go ahead and drill through that cross member. I'm gonna do the same thing for this side as well. With our pilot holes made, I'm gonna come back with an 11 16 drill bit and enlarge them to the final size. So once these two are enlarged, we're gonna do the same thing for these over here. Now that we have all of our holes drilled, we'll come back with our vacuum, clean everything up, and then what I'm gonna do is take a paint stick and paint the edges there, that bare metal, to protect it from rust, just like we did our main hole here. So 
So once our paint is dry, we're gonna take our U-bolts and these are just gonna drop right down through like so. So now back underneath our truck, here's where our U-bolts drop through. And what we're gonna do is take these springs, we want the large end of the spring facing up, the skinny end pointing down towards the ground. We're gonna put that over the U-bolt. We're gonna take a hex nut and just get it started and tight. I'm gonna do that same thing for the other side right here, as well as the U-bolt on this side. With all of these on there, now what we can do is tighten them down. And with these, what you wanna do is tighten the nut down uh, to where it is flush with the end of our bolt. So about there is perfect. We'll do the same thing for the rest one. Now what we can do is go ahead and resecure our exhaust. It is really tight. Um, so I do suggest putting a lot of uh, lubricant on there to help it go back together easier. And I'm gonna try to line it up. Push it into place and rehang it. At this point, we can go ahead and reinstall our heat shield the opposite way that we removed it. And that'll finish up our look at and our installation of the B&W underbed gooseneck trailer hitch on our 2021 Ram 2500.